We're on problem 92, and problem 92 says a store reported total sales of 385 million. I'm just going to write 385 here for February of this year. If the total sales for the same month last year was 320 million, approximately what was the percent increase in sales? So it went from 320 million to 385 million, and they're wondering what is the percentage of increase. Well, first thing we want to see here, first thing we want to find out is by how uh, how much the amount actually increased, and we do that by simple subtraction. And uh, we find that from last year to this year, it increased by 65 million. So then what we do is we take that increase and we put it over the original amount. We set a ratio to find the percentage of increase. Let's get rid of the zero and we get x equals 650 over 32. So far so good. Uh, if we actually then do the division, what ends up happening is we get 32 over 6. 50, two times, 0, point, something, something, something. Um, the question says approximately what was the percentage increase. And if you look on the answer choices, they give you 2%, 17%, 20%, 65%. And so the only one that's close to whatever this decimal would actually be is answer choice C, which is 20%. On to problem 93, which says, if the median of the numbers in list 1 is equal to the median of the numbers in list 2, what is the value of x? So x is what? And here are the lists. List 1, list 2, you have 3, 6, 8, and 19. And for list 2, we have x, 3, 6, 8, 19. When there's an odd number of values in a list, we just take the middle value, and that will always be the median. When there's an even number, we take the two, uh, mo the two numbers in the middle, and we actually find the, the mean of that. So for list one, if we were to look for the median, we would take the average of 6 and 8, and we would get 7. So the median is 7 for list one. For list two, is there a 7 here? No, but we have x. And in order for list two, for the median of list 2 to be the same as list 1, x would actually have to be 7. And that gives us the answer for number 93, which is answer choice B. On to 94. 94 says, in a certain city... 60% of registered voters are Democrats, and the rest are Republicans. In a mayoral race, if 75% of the registered voters were Democrats, and 20% of the registered voters were Republicans, are expected to vote for candidate A, what percent of the registered voters are expected to vote for candidate A? It sounds like a really complex, ridiculous problem with matching overlapping sets. But these are actually very easy to set up if you uh, are familiar with matrices. So uh, let's, let's do that here. Uh, we know that there are Republicans and Democrats. So I'll call them Dems and Reps. And they're total voters. At the same time, we also know that we're going to be looking for people who are voting for candidate A and people who are not going to be voting for candidate A. So I'll draw candidate A and then I'll cross it out like so. And of course, there are the total number of people. So the way we solve this is uh, we know that we're looking for percentages. And whenever we're looking for percentages, it's always good to pretend that the total amount of people or the total number of people is 100 because it's a big number that we can use to just plug in the percentages immediately. And that is the total number of people in this, in this town or in this city. They tell us that 60% of these voters are Democrats, right? So 60. If 60 are Democrats and there's 100 people in the town and you have to be either Democrat or Republican, there are no independents in this question, then there must be 
40 Republicans. Okay, now they tell us that 75% of the registered voters who are Democrats, so 75% of 60 voted for candidate A. So let's, uh, let's figure that out very quickly here. 75% of 60, what is that? That is 45. So 45% of the people in the town are going to be, are Democrats and are going to be voting for candidate A. The problem also tells us that, let's see, 20% of the registered voters who are Republican, so 20% who are Republican, are going to be voting for candidate A. So 20% over, of 40, that is, let me cancel out the zeros, going to be eight. So four, or X is going to be eight. So eight Republicans are going to be voting for candidate A. Now we just add these two. And we get 53. So 53 people, or 53% of the people in this town are going to be voting for candidate A. And that is also what we're looking for. It says what percentage of the registered voters are going to be voting for candidate A. And 53 is answer choice B. Number 95 is a problem that we just have to do a lot of computation on. So I will write this out right now. Think back to what I said in a previous video, which is that whenever there's a computation problem, there tends to be some sort of shortcut. In this case, it's a shortcut, but it's a very obvious one. You just cancel out the threes and you divide cross divide and you get one four divided by four means multiplied by uh, one fourth and now it's a lot easier to solve four times four sixteen two goes into sixteen eight times so that's the same as saying eight over sixteen you add 8 plus 1 is 9, subtract 9, and uh, you get 0 over 16, which equals 0. And that is E. Number 96. Water consists of hydrogen and oxygen to the approximate ratio of 2 over 16. So we have hydrogen, call it high and oxygen, and that ratio is 2 over 16. All right. Well, let's simplify this. 1 over 8. So the ratio is 1 over 8. OK. Approximately how many grams of oxygen are there in 144 grams of water? So they tell us that the total is 144. We uh, we'll simply need to use the multiplier method to solve this simple ratio problem. So 144 equals 1x plus 8x. And that's 9x equals 144. Remember what we're solving for, though. We're going to be solving for uh, the grams of oxygen, so we're going to be looking for 8x. Let me write that here so that we don't forget. That's going to be what our answer is. Anyway, let's continue solving. X is going to be 9 into 144. One time. Hmm. Let's see. What is that? Okay, so it goes into 144. One time. Sixteen, so x equals sixteen, and now we plug that back into eight x. And you get one twenty-eight. And one twenty-eight is answer choice 
D. Number 97. If x times 2x plus 1 equals 0, and x plus a half times 2x minus 3 equals 0, then x is what? FOIL method. We're going to have to distribute and, and uh, do the multiplication to, to get two completely new equations. Let's do that. x times 2x is 2x squared. x times 1 is x equals 0. 2x squared equals negative x. Okay. And now for the second equation, let me circle this so we don't forget. For the second equation, FOIL, you know, let's do the, the outside first. 2x times x is 2x squared. Uh, negative 3 times x is negative 3x. 2x times a half is going to be just x. And finally, half times negative 3, negative 3 over 2. Add these together, and you get 2x minus 3 over 2 equals 0. Forgot about that. And you get 2x squared minus 2x equals 3 over 2. So now we have two separate equations. What's interesting here is that we know 2x squared equals negative x. So let's substitute that into equation number 2. Let's see what we get. What we get is negative x minus 2x equals 3 over 2. That is 3, negative 3x equals 3 over 2. And then uh, cross multiply. x equals 3. 3 times 2 times negative 3, cancel out the 3's, and you get 1 over 2, negative 1 over 2, because the negative remains. This becomes negative 1. Negative 1 over 2, or negative 1 half, is going to be answer choice B. All right, and uh, I think I'm all out of time, so I will see you in the next video.